Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying the build series of the Ultima RS. So far, uh, in this episode, I'm gonna try to get the AC and heater installed, and then I'm gonna try to do steering, suspension, and brakes. That's definitely gonna get done, and then possibly the gear shift and the handbrake. I'm gonna get that started, so let's start with the AC. So jumping right in, you can see I've got this bracket here. This has been rib nutted with M5 rib nuts. There's three of them on the other side of this. And then this plate, you mount this first, and then this plate is what the actual AC unit sits on. And I've got the AC unit in a box right back here. So you can check this out. So that's how it comes. It's obviously unwrapped from all the uh, all the bubble wrap, but it's a decently sized unit. It's it's not the most lightweight thing, which you know I guess beggars can't be choosers. I live in South Florida, so it's uh, it's going to be really hot, and this thing would be just an oven without this. So I've got this plate, and I coated it with a it was a heat shield, but it's also right behind this is is sound deadener. So you can see the difference between that panel and this panel, which is completely dead. So I don't want any like rattles with this or anything going on while the car is driving. So I'm, I'm doing this now rather than having to find the problem and then do it later. So I'm gonna rivet this to the chassis. You can see I've got all these, these holes already drilled out and marked and measured. I'm going to rib nut these two together, or I'm going to screw this to this, and then draw the rivet holes and then punch this thing in permanently, and then get on with the AC. All right, so I finally got the AC all bolted up. You can see this unit right here is secured with one bolt right there to that plate, and then that plate's all riveted. You saw me rivet those. And then the electronics are wired up right through here. Uh, this is the temperature control switch. It's got the thermostat. Uh, and then here is the fan speed switch and it's wired up right through here. This green wire goes to the bottom plug right here. And then there's a black cable that goes to the other side of this. I've got these two vents. These are gonna be the interior vents, uh, or at least the dash vents, I guess. And then these go down to the footwell area. And then there's this small pole type thing. Let me see if I can get a good look at it. There it is right there little focus right there yeah so so that is for the heater you pull on that and then what it does is if you come over here comes right out of the back it loops around then this will all be cleaned up but it has to go into through that hole 
and it goes to this little heater valve and it moves this back and forth. Uh, the flow is that way and this will go on the bottom heater hose. Here's all the heater hose laid out. So I need to run that from these two all the way through right there and then it connects to a radiator pipe that sits back here and gets and gets hot water from the engine. Okay, just like I talked about a second ago, got the heater hoses and this cable that works the heater switch. They flow down here into the luggage bin and you can see oh, this is set up right here. This little cable attaches under the dash. You pull it and it moves the switch and it opens the valve and then they're secured with uh, zip ties to these little clips that are riveted and then the bottom ones like I said in the last video are the intercooler hoses. Uh, I still need to take the side pod off and do a, a, a couple other little things and then I need to run the top radiator line and then come right down through here. So I have to notch that out a little bit and it flows with that pipe. Uh, but the heater hoses flow right into here. They've been trimmed and now I'm going to start on the steering. So here's a look at the steering system parts. We've got the steering rack. We've got the steering column parts, uh, all the hardware and everything to bolt them up. So first steps are gonna be to install the rack. Second step is to do the column and uh, these bushings right here that hold the, that's the steering wheel main shaft. Apparently these things are a little bit tough to fit and they're very tight. So that might include uh, removing some of the electroplating off of there to get them to fit, which is all in the manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that now and uh, Enjoy the next steps. Right, Louie? Steering's finally done. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Just gotta mount up the steering rack. And then I was having a little bit of problems with these with these holes right here. I was expecting it, but I didn't uh, I didn't think I'd be I'd drop a washer down there, so I had to run to uh, Harbor Freight and get this flexible magnetic uh, retriever, which got it no problem, but you have to feed I don't know if I can get this on video, but there's a uh, nylon lock nut right here and right here, and you can use a deep socket. It's no problem to, to do that, but I ended up putting some double-sided tape on my finger and then the washer, and then once you get it onto the threads, you're kind of golden, and then just get the nut started, and uh, there was no problem after that. And then you just kind of leave the steering rack a little bit loose, so that it can line up with this. And then I had to take off some of the electroplating with a wire wheel, just put it on the end of an angle grinder and use a wire wheel, take some of the material off. This part slid on no problem at all, but these shafts are a little bit oversized, so you don't wanna hammer these because you'll mess with the bearings uh, in, in right here, so you don't wanna ruin them. Uh, but then it just kinda snakes up here and then 
The manual also talked about these being a little bit tight with these bushings. So you take some 600 grit, or I think they, yeah, I think they said like 400 grit or 600 grit. I use 600. Uh, and then you put some WD-40 on it and just put this in a vise and, and kind of go around it and take some of the material off, but it turns pretty, pretty easily. It's very positive feeling. So it's working, got the dust boots on there and uh, steering's ready to go. So next steps, I'm gonna start on the suspension. Got everything laid out at each corner and then down here are the bushings that I need to install in each one of those before I can mount it up. So I'm gonna start on that as the dogs bark at the UPS guy. All right, so I went ahead and installed the upper and lower control arms or wishbones. Uh, these are the urethane bushed ones. There's an optional uh, heim joint full suspension, but this one isn't on there. I don't even know if it's on the Ultima Options sheet or I probably would have done it, but pretty nice, powder coated. Uh, some of those were fighting me pretty hard because uh, the welds in the from the from the square tube to the mounts, sometimes it, it's so close up to the urethane bushing, and it's not on this case, but it's more so in the back, but sometimes the welds get so close that you can't put the arm all the way in in order for the bolt to line up. But I got it done, and uh, most of the, let's see, almost all the bolts on the car, they start out, or they're, they're told to start with the bolt on the inner part, and then outwards, so like like this one. So all around in every corner it's like that, with the exception of the top front. And I don't know why that is right now, it might be like a serviceability type thing later on when the car is fully put together, but these are the only ones where the bolts go from outwards in instead of inside out. So after getting that done, I'm ready to move on to one of the coolest parts of the build, the AP Racing Big Brake Kit. Uh, these are the optional larger rotors with six piston calipers. And then I've got the, uh, the handbrake over there. So I'm gonna unbox these and get these going for the rear. And uh, if anyone knows AP Racing, they know that it's probably one of the best in the business. They make Formula One clutches, they make everything. There was a new uh, Bugatti that just came out 
it's like a track only Bugatti. And as it was lapping the track, you can look in and you can see that thing has AP brakes on it. So this is the best of the best. All right, so I've got the rear brakes installed. Very straightforward. Uh, it was kind of interesting opening up an AP racing box and seeing something with a Brembo uh, label on it, but I guess they're working together on this one. Uh, but this is all in an AP racing box. But um, first impressions are just that these things are massive and uh, just such high quality, put the pads on. And, uh, and you know, everyone wants all kinds of big power but they don't really they don't really look to slow the car down that's usually that's usually last on the list but I'm glad that this is going to be the full package uh, next steps so I was going to do the front brakes uh, I don't have the shocks on either of them because I'm waiting for some different springs to arrive uh, then I'll go ahead and do that but right now I can actually go ahead and put on the front lift kit so I'm going to start on that so here's what you get in the box of the lift kit. Uh, looks to be really, really high quality. It's cool that they have all the foam cut out perfectly. It says Ultima RS Ride Height Lifter. Looks like they made it specifically for the Ultima or at least, you know, branded it. I'm sure I paid a nice amount more for just that little bit in the foam. But uh, looks like we've got a pump here. Got some hydraulic fluid for this reservoir. I know that in the instructions there's some parts where I need to bleed the system. Looks like we've got a little ride height controller. These ride on the shocks and a little control module. And then we've got the lift pump relay right here that I need to wire up to the electrical system. This installs right in front of the battery. So let's get this going and see what it's all about.
All right, so there's a lift pump installed right there, uh, just below the steering rack. Very straightforward install. Just uh, three holes, uh, put rib nuts in there, and then I have some M6 screws that go down in there that hold the base, the little aluminum base, and then that little aluminum base uh, screws on the bottom with some countersunk screws into the reservoir and pump. And then we've got just this little clip right here that then will connect to right here. And then here's a little control box. It says Ultima RS ride height control. It's pretty cool, I didn't see this at first, but there's these little switches. And then one is a normal height and then that's the lift one. And then those plug into these two connectors right here. Uh, so the wiring in the, in the relay and everything, it attaches to right here. Pretty straightforward. And then we've got three wires coming out of there and then they go up right here. The white wire goes over to here and splices into another white wire. Uh, and then we've got red that comes from the lift pump re or lift pump control box. And then this orange one, I believe, oh no, this one goes back here, but there was one that I had to move uh, that was already here. So I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but there was an existing wire here. I unplug it and then plug one in its place. And that's basically just the fuse. We've got the fuse and then we've got the relay. Only thing that was involved in the relay wiring was to uh, connect a ground to, you can see there's like all these grounds looped from relay to relay. So those are all connected and then lift pump relay. And then what else? That's about it. And then there's just a ground. I don't know where the, there is a ground right there. So here's a ground that needs to be connected to the chassis. Pretty easy. Uh, and then the collars insert right over the shocks. So they unscrew or screw all the way down there. And you can see I don't have springs on here. I said that earlier that I'm ordering different springs. So when those come in, I'll just undo this bolt, pull over, pull this over. And then this comes right off very, very easily. You just take this, this off. The spring goes down right on there. And then I haven't hooked up the hydraulic lines because I need to set the ride height. So once this thing's on the ground uh, with some proper weight on it, I can set the ride height and turn these as needed as they go up and down. And then these fill with hydraulic fluid from the pump and then push down. So they make the ride height go up. And that's how you get over these speed bumps. Uh, also, you can see over there, got my transmission that came from Orbit Racing. Uh, well, I didn't buy it from Orbit Racing, but I had them set the lash. I had put the wave track in myself and then I had them set the lash and then so I just painted it and it's a pretty cool, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like a metallic black. It's an engine paint by VHT and it looks so cool in person. It just looks like, a, I don't know, you'd have to see it in person, but it looks really, really cool. And I think it'll go really well with the headers and uh, I'm going to do the headers in burnt bronze. Um, that seemed to be the the most liked choice. Uh, first it was the the glacier glacier silver but then uh, a bunch of mail-in ballots came in for the uh, the burnt bronze so that switched everything up and now the burnt bronze is the winner. So next thing is I'm gonna get to the gear shift and the e-brake or parking brake and that'll be it for this video. So I'm gonna get that going and uh, that'll be a wrap.
All right, so the shifter's in. Pretty cool piece of uh, kit right there. Can't really use it until uh, until those shift cables are hooked up. It at least tells you not to remove those zip ties until doing so. I'm sure it has something to do with these springs unloading right here, but they go right through to these grommets. I still need to finalize those. And then one of the handbrake cables goes along that side, and then the rest of the cables come along this side, and they're just hanging out right there for right now. But they wrap around, and then there's two little things, actually, I can show you right now. The ship cables go right to here. These are taped off right now, but they're these two little things right here that move and put it in different gears. So that's how that works. And that is your wrap for this video. Uh, up until now, I've finished the whole chassis section of the build manual with the exception of wheels, which should be coming soon. I put that order in a couple, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, I did not go with the stock Ultima wheels, so I'll have to show you guys those when they get here. I think you'll like them. Uh, next up is the interior. I'm still waiting on seats. Uh, I ordered those in July, and I was told that they'd be shipping within the next week or two. So. Again, that's another thing that, that I'm just waiting on, but you guys will like those too. Also not the stock seats. Today I ordered the fuel system, but other than that, I only have a few boxes left. I'm really surprised because I just keep throwing out box after box after box and I really don't have too many left uh, with the exception of just a few, which is just all kinds of little stuff. A lot of cooling stuff. Um, there's a lot of different like Y pipes and H pipes and all kinds of stuff that fit through here to go for the heater and then the intercooler and uh, to the radiator. So there's a kind of a lot of things to go with that, which, which I need to figure out. I, I have all that stuff though, which is good. The interior, that's gonna be pretty minimal. I got the Alcantara dash with orange stitching. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, but I really don't need to drill many holes and, and fit all that stuff because I'm running the aim dash. So I have no analog gauges at all. That's pretty much it. I accomplished everything that you see in this video within five days. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please drop your comments, suggestions, criticisms, or anything else you'd like down below, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.